So the 960 grid system is a, an existing framework that we can use to lay out a website pretty easily. Um, it's based on the idea that you can say that a screen is defined by 960 pixels across and you can cut that up into columns and use a sort of grid to make your design um, very easy to lay out. And you can choose how many columns of the grid each part of your design takes up. Okay, so um, we call this a CSS framework because someone else designed it. Um, they've written all the CSS rules to make the layout actually work. You can still go in and change colors and borders and that kind of thing. Um, but the main part of the layout is already implemented for you. You just have to know what their class names are to get it to work. It lets you very quickly um, come up with designs. It does all the heavy lifting in terms of setting margins and padding and getting stuff to kind of line up nicely. Um, there's some nice examples on this website. Um, there's a lot of frameworks like this. We're just using 960GS because it's pretty easy to use and pretty straightforward. But if you scroll down their website, which is 960.GS, um, there's some sample designs. And when you look at them, you can toggle on the grid to see how they used it to lay things out. And you'll notice that even when there's objects, let me find one, um, that don't seem like they're squares, like these little circle items here don't look like it, um, they're still taking up a certain amount of the grid. And so they're just artwork or backgrounds that are, are fixed to that grid layout. And so you can do a lot of different things um, pretty quickly by using this grid to get things to sit next to each other and flow down the page pretty nicely. So the question is now, how do you do this? Well, first thing you need to do is go to this website, 960.gs, and you have to download the framework for yourself. So there's this button on the page, it's conveniently labeled big old download button. Click on that, you will get a zipped copy of the framework. Um, it will come down, it'll be zipped. You'll have to extract it. So to do that, you just right clicked on it and it say extract here and you'll get um, the folders unzipped. And if you look inside that folder, once you've unzipped it, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there and it goes well beyond what we actually need. Um, there's a couple parts that are very important for you. So here there's one called sketch sheets and that actually has um, grids that you can print out and you can wireframe on top of so you can see the grid and write out your layout um, so you can have a plan for where you're going. Um, so it's good for a planning tool. If you wanted to flesh it out in Fireworks or Illustrator or Photoshop or something to make a mock-up without actually doing the code, um, in this templates folder, they have the grids in those kind of files so you can draw on top of them. Um, and then inside this code folder are the CSS styles to make this work. And there's also some demo HTML files so you can use those as a starting point and then sort of modify and erase what you don't need as you work. Okay. So what you'll want to do to get started is pull the CSS folder and put it into your own project. And then I would bring out one of those demo files, um, rename it, and then you can sort of remove what you don't want to keep. And then you can start from there because it already has the links to their style sheets that define what the classes are um, that make the grid work. Um, and you can actually either remove entirely or edit the text.css and demo.css files. Um, that's where they're kind of controlling the colors of the grid and things um, that you probably will want to edit. Okay. Then you just have to make sure that your HTML, whether it's one of these that you're editing or a fresh one that you're creating, is sitting directly outside the CSS folder for the links to work. Okay. So inside the folder that you've downloaded, there's actually several different grid options. You can do 12 columns, 16 columns, or 24 columns. Um, the main container for the page is always 960 pixels wide, um, and it's always set up to have certain margins so that you get a gutter or a set of spacing. So by that, I mean this white part right here um, between two of your defined sections of 20 pixels. Um, when you are creating a full row, the total width of that whole row will add up to 960 pixels. Um, and each grid cell has a class. And so these already exist. You just have to add them to make it specify what the width will be. Um, if you click on this link, there's a demo. So here's a little preview of the 12 column grid that'll show you what the 16 column and 24 column grids look like as well.
Okay. So the basics behind this are that the main part of the page gets a big div around it, and that div gets a class that starts with the word container, has an underscore, and then here you put the value of the grid system you want to use. So if you want a 12 column grid, you put a 12 there. If you want a 16 column grid, you put a 16 there. If you want a 24 column grid, you put a 24 there. Okay. And then inside of that, you define basically all of your rows. Okay. The rule here is that all the row, rows um, columns have to add up to the total number for the page. So if I'm using a 12 column grid, then all the sections in a particular row have to add up to 12. So I, on this picture up here, I have one big section that's the whole page and then two smaller sections that are each half a page. So here's the code that defines that. I've got a div with a class of grid 12, so that'll take up all 12 columns. I can put some p tags in there and here's my little text that's showing this 940. Um, I guess this is kind of cheating because the pix isn't there, and it would be if this were really the code, um, but we'll just ignore that fact. Um, you can put images in here. You can put whatever you want in there. Okay. Um, now, there's one little trick to this. Before I go to my next row, I need to actually do a little cheat, which is to create an empty div that knocks everything down to the next line. So here's my first row. In between, before I go to my next row where these two items are sitting, I have to put a div and give it a class of clear, and then I just put nothing in there and close it off, and that will knock my next row down, okay? And then I've got two more divs, one to define this guy and one to define this guy. Um, they're both half the page, so I want them each to be grid six. Okay, and then I can put whatever I want in those guys, and each of them will take up half the page. And then even though I'm at the bottom, I still want to define the end of the row by putting another div with class clear that has no contents. Okay. Um, I am able, even though I'm separating this page into sections, to apply a continuous background um, underneath multiple separated columns. And the way I can do that in this example here, I want to place, place a blue um, background underneath those two separate sections on my second row. And here's what that looks like in code. So I'm going to make a little class rule called blue that just says background color to blue. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to make a wrapper div around those two pieces that defined my half and half of the page. They weren't wrapped previously, but now they are. Um, I have to tell my wrapper how many sections of the grid to take up. So I'm going to tell it to take up 12 and I'm going to tell it to have a background color of blue. Okay. Um, once you start wrapping divs that are defining the sections, you have to give them um, a, a little extra class. So the first one that's been wrapped has to have the class alpha added to it. And then the last one that's been wrapped, and by wrapped I mean there's a div around these guys, has to have the class omega added to it. And if there were additional pieces, say these were like, four, four, and four, the middle one would not get any special new class added to it, just the first one and the last one. Okay. If I don't want um, a section in every single column in the grid, then I have to use um, either prefixes or suffixes to make that gap appear. So here, instead of having two um, sections on my second row. I actually want a gap here of one, two, three, four, five columns. And the way that I do that is not to make like an empty div, but instead to define the div that, the div that I do want. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns. So that's grid seven. And then I'm going to add to it a prefix of how many I want to skip. So at prefix five, means shove one, two, three, four, five columns width of stuff before I put this other div on the page, and then I can leave some nice white space on the page if I want to, okay? Similarly, if I want to have space after the div, I have to use another class called suffix. So here I've got a section. Um, I don't want to put anything here. I want it to be a, a blank space before I get to my next row. So I count up how many columns I do have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's grid seven right here. And then again, suffix 
five because I'm leaving a gap of five. So suffix if it's after and prefix if it's before. Okay, so that's the basics of how you make a, um, a GS grid, 960 grid system layout. Um, you can accomplish more and more complicated things by nesting the divs inside each other. Um, it's pretty cool. It does have a huge weakness, which is that the grid is fixed because we're defining specific pixels for the widths of everything. Um, so this will work really nicely on like your laptop or your desktop computer, but it is not going to accommodate different types of screens. So if somebody accesses this on a mobile phone or something, it's going to degrade pretty quickly. And we're going to learn how to uh, take care of that using a slightly different technique, but this is a nice basic place to start so you can get kind of used to working with grids.